Oh, and thank you, Marty Charlotte. Uh, and in the next part, uh, we are going to look at a case study trying to confirm and illustrate the importance of yeast selection, uh, the process we just did, fermentation temperature, but also yeast nutrition regime on kinetics, an analytical, and sensorial profile of Sauvignon Blanc. So this was done in order to recommend the best strain and optimize fermentation conditions according to each winemaker's target. So the idea is really to take uh, one strain or a few strains and then uh, start playing with temperature and nutrition and see how this affects the fermentation and the wines. So this is the experimental design of this case study. It was done on a Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley. Um, and uh, the most important information here is that the ratio of yan per sugar in gram per liter was adjusted to one using different types of nutrients. These nutrients were added 50% at this inoculation and then 50% at one third of the alcoholic fermentation. And um, this experiment was done with two strains uh, that we uh, presented in the in the previous uh, section, so strain A and the strain that was eventually selected um, because of its release of the 4MMP and its overall good qualities, so strain 17, 9, 12, that I will call strain 12 from now on. Uh, in terms of temperature regime, we had three different regimes. The first one was fermentation at 12 Celsius constant. The second one was three days starting at 18 and then moved to the 12 Celsius room. And the last one was 18 Celsius constant. And finally, we had three different nutrition regimes with once again, two additions. The first one was uh, mineral nitrogen under the form of DAP at yeast inoculation and then uh, organic nitrogen under the form of a yeast total autolysate. The two other scenarios were first a yeast uh, autolysate, uh, first and then DAP or spring firm extreme. So two strain, three temperature regime and three nutrition regimes. So what is spring firm extreme? Uh, spring firm extreme is a total yeast autolysate from the fermentis portfolio. I want you to highlight uh, uh, what it is. So the process to produce a total yeast totalizer, we start with a yeast cream that goes through a plasmolysis, that is a heat treatment uh, in order to produce uh, an inactivated yeast. Um, so this yeast is, is dead at this point. Then we put the inactivated yeast in such condition that the enzyme itself can degrade the yeast. And eventually we end up with the total yeast totalizer. So the total yeast totalized that uh, solubilized the intracellular content of the yeast. So it's a good source of protein and amino acids. Um, you also have a lipid, sterile survival factors, uh, vitamins, growth factors that are growth factors and minerals. So the content in, uh, in available nitrogen under the form of uh, amino nitrogen is actually pretty low in a total yeast totalized that it's around 3.7%. So compared to a DAP that has approximately 21% of nitrogen under the form of aminium, it's actually uh, pretty low. But remember that there are other things in there that help with fermentation, the vitamin, the lipid sterols, the minerals. So our hypothesis based on previous work is that spring firm extreme contains an equivalent uh, of yan of 10% because uh, of its fermentative power. Um, so in, in the dosage of this product, we will consider that hop, DAP as 21% and spring firm extreme 10%. So these are the results. We're going to start with uh, the impact of temperature on kinetics. Uh, you have the different, um, the different scenarios by average of temperature here. So you have the scenario at 18 Celsius, the one at 12 Celsius here and the one 18 going 12. And you have uh, the two strain A and 12. The first uh, thing, uh, conclusion here is that the two strains are very similar within the same temperature. Uh, you cannot see a lot of difference between the two strains. The main differences are gonna de go be through uh, the different temperature regimes. So here you have the 18 Celsius and here the 12 Celsius. What was interesting is that the scenario that goes 
18 to 12 actually here finished approximately at the same time than the 12 Celsius. Here we have the impact on the nutrition regime on kinetics. So you have a zoom on the 12% constant, 18 to 12 and 18, and you have the different uh, nutrition program, DAP, then extreme, and then uh, the lightest colors are gonna be the yeast total utilized at first. The first, uh, the thing that we see first is that um, you see more differences at 12 Celsius constant than the other nutrition regime where it's pretty homogeneous. Um, and this is because it's definitely a more challenging environment for the yeast. And in this context, we, we tend to see more differences between yeast. Um, also, you can see that uh, in this scenario, it is better when you are, are, the better scenarios are in the lighter shades, which are, once again, the spring term extreme first. So it tends to be, uh, it tends to be better scenarios for the yeast, and it shows the strong fermentative uh, power of these total yeast totalized. All right, here are uh, the impact on analytical parameters. So we start with volatile acidity and acidity in general, strain A on the left and 12 on the right. Uh, first thing, we see a real difference between the strain with strain A producing uh, overall more volatile acidity than strain 12. Uh, we also see that overall, you tend to have more volatile acidity and less uh, uh, acidity in general at low temperature because this is a most stressful condition for the yeast. And also if you see through different nutrition regime, you can really see um, some main conclusions there. Here you have uh, the total SO2, uh, strain A and strain 12 on the right. Once again, you see real differences between the strain with strain A producing overall a larger amount and important amount of SO2, uh, approximately 100 ppm and 1260. You also see that overall the lowest production is 18 going 12 in both cases. And also for strain A, you can see that it tends to go down through the nutrition regime here, which means that it is better when you have spring firm extreme uh, at the beginning or spring firm extreme as a sole source. So it is a less stressful condition uh, leading to less uh, total SO2 production. Here is the impact on the aromas. So uh, specifically the higher alcohol and acetate esters. Uh, if we start with the isoamyl acetate, um, you can see once again, real differences between strains that we've seen you know, in, in through the presentation, strain A producing more isoamyl acetate than strain 12 overall. You can also see the obvious impact of evaporation. In uh, both cases, you have more isoamyl acetate when you are at 12 constant and when you lower the temperature after three days. Uh, and you can see really no obvious impact on nutrition here. Through the regime, it's hard to go to a conclusion. With the 2 phenyl ethanol and acetate, um, first of all, they are following uh, the same trends. And you tend to have higher production at higher temperatures. So here, here and here, and here and here. Um, but they also follow evaporation. So which means usually the optimal amount is going to be 18 going 12 and here and here. And also for strain A, again, we see this increase um, of, uh, of, of, of tufelin ethanol and acetate when you use spring firm uh, at the beginning or as a sole source. Here, the impact on the other category of uh, ester, the ethyl esters, you have the from ethyl butanoate to decanoate and strain A on the left, 12 on the right. Uh, we do see real differences again uh, between the strain, a uh, very different uh, profile for each uh, ester, and also different impact uh, for each strain of the temperature and nutrition. Um, there's a shape of, uh, of the graphs are very different. Uh, the main trends that we can see here uh, are that um, with higher um, with um, higher temperature, we tend to see uh, a, a higher production of C8 to C10 uh, esters and equal or less uh, C4 to C6. 
And I think the hypothesis behind that is that when you increase the temperature, you increase the membrane fluidity and you facilitate the diffusion of these uh, very large molecules. And this is the most interesting, um, I would say, is the impact of on the thiols. So again, strain A here, strain 12 on the right, and we look at the three molecules of interest, 3MHA, 3MH, 3MHA, and 4MMP. So main conclusions are real differences between the strain uh, in all these molecules, especially the 4MMP here. We confirm that strain A produces none in any condition. When strain 12, it seems that in some condition uh, produces uh, uh, good amounts. Then you have uh, a higher release of these styles at higher temperature. So for the 3MHA, the optimal amounts for both strains is going to be for starting the fermentation at 18 Celsius. And it's even more obvious for the 4MMP for strain 12, where at 12 Celsius, you have no production at all. When uh, at higher temperature at the beginning of the fermentation, you seem to have some good production in some cases. Another conclusion for the 3MHA, remember it's an acetate. It seems also to be affected by uh, evaporation. So in all cases, it has a better uh, production and maintenance uh, at, especially maintenance at low temperature. Finally, very interesting here, you see the impact of the nutri nutrition regime. Um, when you are with the good strain in the right range of temperature, you can see that if you start using DAP at the beginning of the fermentation, you have none to very little amount of 4MMP produced. And the opposite, when you start with uh, yeast totalized, you optimize and have good amount of 4MMP. And so this illustrates really the impact of the NCR on the intake and the ERC7 expression. So this was the case study. Now moving on to the validation of the strain in the field. Uh, we did that in the harvest of 2019. Uh, we had trials uh, in the northern at hemisphere. We had 32 extensive trials with this, this strain that was selected. And we also had additional one in the south hemisphere in 2020. Um, so something important to do when you do validation in the field of a new strain is to do implantation controls. So these trials are usually done, no, they're always done in a way that we have a mass that is separated uh, and very homogeneous between two tanks. One is inoculated with a control, which is the yeast uh, business as usual for a winery, and the other one with the new strain. And at approximately two thirds of the fermentation, we do of the fermentation, we do an implantation test when we are looking to see if we can recover the yeast. Um, and so strain 12, in average, had a very good implantation rate compared to the control. So that was uh, very positive for the yeast. Uh, this is an example of results. Uh, you have uh, this one, this trial specifically was done again in so on Sauvignon Blanc in France. And this was done at 17 Celsius degree. Um, result of the kinetics uh, for this specific fermentation, you can see um, strange 12 in blue had a very short lag -like phase versus a control, a fast fermentation, and clean analytical profile, so low volatile acidity compared to the control, and same amount of total SO2. This is the example of the organoleptic profile. Uh, for the same trial, it showed enhancement of the thiols. Once again, the scriptures, so exotic fruit, uh, more blackcurrant boxwood, and less amylic. And as shown by Marshallot also, a good acidity and overall a good persistence. So conclusion here for the overall study. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc's aromatic profile is driven by um, and is a balance between two categor main categories of, of uh, aromas, the fermentative flavors, mainly the higher alcohol and the esters, and the varietal flavors that are the thiols. Uh, I hope we have shown that the selection of yeast is crucial to express the potential of the Sauvignon Blanc through their ability to produce different types of esters and release thiols from the precursors, uh, notably through the ERC7 gene expression. After yeast selection, the second thing that is the most important is going to be the fermentation temperature. That is the biggest factor. 
at high temperature, you are going to have a high release of thiols and production of higher alcohol and long chain ethyl esters. At low temperature, you can have high conservation of the acetate esters and production of short chain uh, ethyl esters. If you start at high, then go low in temperature, it seems to be the best compromise in terms of both release, uh, production, and conservation of the aromas and uh, overall complexity of the wine. And this way, you also decrease the potential defects in the wine, SO2 and volatile acidity uh, in, uh, mainly. But of course, if you do that, you need to be prepared to have a slower fermentation. So not all wine wineries um, want to go that route. Finally, uh, the effect of nutrition is not as important, but it is uh, mainly ammonium supplementation at the start of the alcoholic fermentation can lower or block the thiol release, especially for MMT. Uh, so organic nutrient supplementation will lower the stress of the yeast and also the defect. And the best compromise is for Sauvignon Blanc is to start with an organic nutrient, then ammonium uh, later in fermentation. So this whole process led to the selection of a yeast strain. Um, uh, strain 17912 is now Safano SH12 in the Fermentis portfolio. I wanted to, uh, to thank you for your attention and also say a big thank to Etienne Dorinac for Etienne Dorinac from Fermentis who did a great job on this project. Thank you.